Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. Here we go, four years on. Fountain Pen Journey, four years I've been doing this. I don't even know if I'm in the frame of this camera, so I thought I'd just start off by showing you a uh, shot of who I am in case uh, you've subscribed in the last year or so and you haven't watched any of my face-to-face -face videos. So today it's a handheld video explaining where I'm at with my Fountain Pen Journey and everything else so let's just spin the camera around and have a look what's going on okay so right it is recording that's great so yeah this is the office it's going to be a library for those of you uh, who followed my uh, fountain pen journey um, channel update earlier this year uh, you will know that we moved house and yeah that was everything you'd expect with a house move nightmare and of course this being the spare bedroom which we're going to convert into an office is the last thing that we're going to do and I'm going to do that um, this weekend so it will hopefully be done by the time I uh, publish this video so fountain pen journey four years on moved location and here we have it so as you can see the room is completely undone there is there's I mean, it's, it's, we've got bookshelves we've got boxes of books we've got curtains office furniture which hasn't even been assembled i have a new desk which i will be filming my videos at nice bit of natural light there and um yeah i'll be getting a different chair uh, which is in that box just down there um, so yeah I mean it's all very temporary at the moment and it's been difficult to film videos uh, having moved house basically for anyone thinking of starting their own YouTube channel especially about fountain pens you need an awful lot of time I mean you need to put serious amounts of time in and everything else just to get the channel going certainly keep to keep it going so thank you for all of my uh, subscribers who've stuck with me especially those of you who've uh, followed me right from my early days so four years on and you've seen my fountain pen journey it has been a journey it's always i don't know i wouldn't say improving it's always something new um and I'll give you my thoughts about where things are right now with my fountain pen collection and fountain pen use on this journey. Um, I mean, as you can see, new desk. I got this. This thing was in a uh, Amazon Day deal in um, back in June, I think it was. This sort of wooden. I don't know what you call it. It's it's a really useful stationary holder. Um, I mean. Your pens are all at an angle, obviously I keep my pens nibbed down, saves any hard starts, so these all just slide, well just lay in these little, I don't know what you call them, little shelves, and it's really good, I mean you can get <laughs> absolutely stacks of pens in there, I've got a few inks which I've sort of uh, salvaged from work because my, honestly it's been a disaster trying to move with fountain pens i've had a fair number inked up they're all at the point where they've either run out of ink or they're running out of ink so i had to take these home from work had a few inks at home at, at work rather which i've brought home there we go we've got some diamine inks on its black denim and odinil and uh, rora and klingner verdigris which I actually haven't even opened yet, so that will go into a pen or two sometime soon. And I've got a few bits and bobs, I mean, I've got my scales in there. So this drawer come shelf desk organiser thing is actually, to be honest, is really quite good. I mean, it's cheap. Um, it's self-assembly. It basically comes in a whole series of these flat pack things and there's quite a lot of bits and you have to figure out the instructions it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle follow the shape slot them in and then you have to screw in to various points there's sort of recesses and gaps and you have to screw into those 
and it to be honest it's, it's not bad for the price it's going to hold a lot of pens it's going to be quite useful um i was a bit disappointed in the fact that these wooden edges are unfinished these are all sort of black lacquered um it's cheap thin sort of wood uh, so i think i might have to go across these with a marker pen or something because it, it just it, it doesn't really match the room. I want a darker looking thing to match the desk. I'm going to do the flooring in here. This is the original carpet. Bit grotty, nothing wrong with it, but yeah, I need some uh, nice vinyl flooring in here and certainly something which can resist the odd uh, drop of ink. Uh, don't tell me why. Obviously, I've been, you know, working here. Um, Let's have a quick look around the room at what's happened to my pens. Right, this IKEA wardrobe, this double big, it's actually really quite huge, this huge wardrobe, um, it was left as part of the property purchase. The estate agent asked me and said, look, people who own the house, they can't be bothered taking it away. Are you interested in keeping it? But they will take it away if you don't want it. And I said, no, 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 we'll keep it must admit it's not brilliant quality but it's relatively new it's in good condition and it you know the doors work um and i've got this to myself i mean obviously in this room we're going to have a library with these bookshelf things um that is going to be around the edges so we've got a nice area clear in the center to sit in uh to read do whatever you want um but this wardrobe is going to be my domain my wife is going to be putting some of her yarn in there for various crochet projects they're old bookmarks that she made a number of years ago um there we go another one of my wife's blankets crocheted blankets we just sort of stuffed in here during the move um yeah so this this is all going to be mine so we've got a lot of space and this is going to be really useful because I want to store my pens properly. I've been storing them in little boxes. I know I did a, um, a video, I think it might have been a couple of years ago now, about how I store my, how I store my fountain pens, um, which I think a lot of people appreciate because they're not the, the... If you've only got a few, they're easy to store. The pens, you know, you stick them in a pen case or whatever, a drawer, they're fine but when you've got so many it's actually a bit of a nightmare to keep track of them all certainly during the move i was finding pens all over the place which i'd actually forgotten about i bought way back in 2016 2017 when i first started my fountain pen journey and i'd still not even inked them up i mean it, it was that bad um so it was a bit of a mess so i've got everything and the well the pens are in one of these really large boxes and well most of them and my inks are in the other very large box down there so they will be put into some storage shelves which i also bought on amazon in the amazon prime day deal which we, you know you get a few quid off i don't know 10 percent, 20 percent, something like that on the products that i bought so um i think they are these things here yeah, these are all in bubble wrap. They're not elegant, but the plastic, they hold many, many pens. They've got lots of drawers in. So that'll be uh, quite useful. I'm going to label everything up so that I've got a, a sailor drawer, a pilot drawer, pelican drawer, things like that. So I know exactly where everything is and where to put it back. So that is where I am at with this. Now, before I go on to talk about where my fountain pen journey is four years on i'll just give you a sneak peek of some i mean i would say pen mail videos but they're really not and i'm not even going to bother with unboxing videos i'll just use the pens and go straight into the reviews so a little taster of where my fountain pen journey is you might be able to see some of these boxes it's upside down now i mean this is how bad things are opus 88 got a few opus 88 pens and if you recognize that box those logos laban so yeah i splashed out and bought a few laban pens um we've got more opus 88 stuff up here uh some chinese goodies in a big 
bag up there, all ready to uh, all ready to be used when I finally unpack all the inks. So this weekend, I mean, I'm going to basically take up this flooring, get that all rolled up and disposed of, lay vinyl flooring in this room. My wife and I are going to organise all the bookshelves and everything like that. So we're going to place those in the right places and we'll sort through our books, things like that, sort them all out into where they should be. And we'll take it from there. Um, so once this room is finished, then I have got the week off after this weekend, basically to do what I please. Um, and I've got a few pet projects. One of them, of course, is sorting out all these pens and inks and putting them into the wardrobe my wife is going to take some space for her yarn she's going to use that for a bit of that a bit of a uh, bit of storage in there which obviously i'm never going to complain about because uh, i'm getting all this space and yeah I'm, I'm, yeah <laughs> yeah you just don't complain you can have whatever space you like <laughs> um so yeah that is where i'm at uh, also, um, in this coming week, I mean, I, I've got a few other things because we moved from a flat to a rather large house. So it was a huge upgrade and we've got a massive garden. And one thing that I am into or getting into, and I'm going to go and visit a nursery next week, are these things, canners. If you're interested in plants, these are these um, subtropical, exotic looking uh, perennials. I really want to uh, grow a few of those in my new greenhouse along with, I'll just show you something else, these things, carnivorous plants. Now I didn't want to completely spam my own uh, channel with a whole load of carnivorous plant stuff because I know that not everybody appreciates it. I know some people will enjoy viewing it, but uh, I am actually starting my own carnivorous plant nursery come blog and everything like that, which I thought I'd do on YouTube. I have, um, I'll try and remember to put a link to uh, my YouTube channel about carnivorous plants down below, but obviously my main concentration is my fountain pens. Uh, so if you're interested in following my uh, exploits in the garden with my canners and my tropical looking plants and my carnivorous plants then head on down to the link below and um, follow me there if you can't be bothered doing that but you want to see the videos on here then please let me know because um, I don't want to uh, I don't want to turn off my subscribers by going off topic so to speak um, but conversely if you only want a little update every now and then, a bit like Wosky Squirrel with his uh, garden updates, which I always really love. Um, I love watching those and Wosky Squirrel's uh, informative videos about his uh, locality in North Dakota. If you want to see things like um, my garden, then just let me know in the comments down below, please, and uh, I'll keep some on this channel rather than uh, putting everything solely on my... Um, uh, Test Valley Triffids uh, YouTube channel. Anyway, so right, let's go back to the pens. Fountain pen journey, four years on. Let's start off with this. Four years. These blue hardback A4 lined cheapo notebooks. I bought a whole load of these from Amazon. They are lined. There you go. They are lined. They're really focus. They are really dirt cheap, and I bought a load of those in the Amazon Prime Day deal. Um, why? Well, Tomoe River went belly up uh, a few weeks ago, 2021, and quite honestly, I don't think. Uh, I don't think I was ever going to get into Tomoe River paper. Dry times were just too long and quite honestly the paper sounded far too thin to be pleasurable for my writing experience. I don't mind writing on, if you like, absorbent rubbish paper. I've actually started over the last 12 months to really prefer it in some ways. These notebooks, 
it's not quite as uh, smooth as op the Oxford um, optic paper there is a bit of texture to it but even this I find occasionally is just not a great writing experience when you're using say for example a fine nib you're just getting a little bit too much feedback um, and certainly if you've got a uh, slightly over polished nib well, I wouldn't say over polished I'd just say a smooth nib sometimes these smooth papers even this cheaper stuff you would, you can end up with the odd skit and it's it's actually something that I've really learned that I dislike intensely I don't like that I'd sooner have a pen which if you put the nib down on the paper it writes and it's all about that trinity the holy trinity pen ink and paper all three of those working in combination together make for a fantastic writing experience rubbish paper absorbent paper fibrous paper you know where you get your fibers in your tines and it blocks the tines up things like that not good but as long as the writing experience works choose a paper that you like using I should, by all rights, be saying, no, I've moved on in four years to using nothing but Tomoe River notebooks. Well, they're no more. And quite honestly, having used Oxford Optic paper in the um, Oxford Soft Touch notebooks, which are A4, you can get the A5 size as well. Um, I've actually got to the point where I don't really, I don't always appreciate the way that the paper isn't very absorbent you get a finer line um, and I would say that things like shimmering inks uh, certainly sheening inks yes they are going to perform better on a non-absorbent non paper however I actually don't, don't like writing with those full time and sometimes if you've got a fairly ordinary ink or a shading ink you just want to be able to write with it effectively and it, it's these are practical I'm all about practicality and sometimes having something where you have to wait five minutes every time you've uh, finished a page because you don't want to turn it because the ink's going to blot all over the place. No, it's not for me. Practical. That's what I, uh, that's what I go for. So with that in mind, I, mean, I even bought I mean, a whole pack of the same paper in these uh, little A5 um, hardback uh, notebooks really good value brilliant so i've got a load of those so that's paper my fountain pen journey was i was thinking a couple of years ago certainly when i started to learn more about paper and discover it i thought yeah this is the way i'm going to go but out of all the brands that i actually like if i'm going to go for a smoother if you like sort of fountain pen friendly paper rhodia that's it end of story i even prefer it to claire fontaine and i understand that it's probably made in the same place the same way um i do have down there some black and red hardback a4 notebooks which i do like writing on that paper the oxford optic paper it, it is good i enjoy it but sometimes you just want something a bit cheaper um and even this these cheapo blue hardback notebooks the paper is still a little bit well polished occasionally um, so you do get that skipping depending on the nib and the ink anyway that's paper out of the way so go back to the pens now do you want a taster this is going to be an absolute nightmare to do one handed let's slide this out here we go we'll give you an unboxing might as well give you an unboxing so you can see some of the upcoming stuff on my fountain pen journey channel so Laban now cult pens had a uh, series of Laban fountain pens in around about mid 2021 um, and I actually really like the look of them I'm not it's, it's not a brand that I particularly knew a lot about or researched However, I like the look of some of the pens, so I bought a few. So let's have a look at what this one is now. There we go. I mean, it's, as you can see, not even unwrapped. So, try and get a good shot of this. There we go. Laban Skeleton Fountain Pen. 
really really interesting quite a unique looking design I like it not a cheap pen um, definitely not you know but not hugely expensive either I mean it this skeleton design is reminiscent of some of the um, more expensive even vintage pens with this sort of metal overlay but there we go that is where my fountain pen journey has kind of headed um, and the reason for that being partly is the fact that let's talk about the elephant in the room China Chinese fountain pens that is where I started my fountain pen journey collecting Jinhao fountain pens which I admittedly still love let me just slide this oh you know what I'll slide that in later I can just wait there so anyway give you a view of something so Jinhao fountain pens I must admit that having used pretty much every brand of Chinese fountain pen that's around certainly the modern ones anyway um, Jin Hao have always been the most consistent and the most affordable cheap Chinese fountain pens and I'll still hold on to that and I wish that Jin Hao would produce a few more models a few more different colors of their existing models because quite honestly I absolutely love them still four years on talking about Laban you know we're looking at pens which you sort of many 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 times the price of a uh, Jin Hao 52A and yet I still highly recommend and love those pens at work I use Jin Hao fountain pens amongst other brands I mean I recently published my Jin Hao uh, X, X450 black shimmering sands fountain pen review a pen which I bought way back at the start of my fountain pen journey in late 2016 and I hadn't inked it up one of the pens that I started to discover when I started packing all these boxes it was just something that happened to sit there and I thought oh, you know what I could do with something that is a little bit glitzy at work something nice to look at but is still functional practical and works well and that, that's Jin Hao nice looking pens that work well I mean in here I have got somewhere stashed away here we go some more modern uh, fountain pens here we go Jin Hao Centennial in yellow and I'm going to do a comparison uh, video of these because I've actually got two or three of these gin house well the, of these centennial type fountain pens from different chinese fountain pen manufacturers so it'll be interesting to see how they all compare but i mean this gin how 100 centennial centennial yeah gin how 100 centennial excellent value pen available in a whole range of colors great nibs great writing experience comes with a converter it's brilliant great price too Moon Man and the likes have all kind of dropped off a cliff because of uh, the various issues to do with the pandemic plus the supply chains which have been affected. It's just been a nightmare really and I think it's starting to bite now because even um, the likes of Pelican and that, they're having difficulty even getting hold of like you know the raw materials to make nibs it's got to the point now where over 18 months on things is actually starting to bite a few years a few years ago no last year everyone was a little bit concerned but stuff was still being manufactured and it started petering out as everything closed down um pen bbs being a good example i mean i think right now i don't think they've ever oh, they haven't uploaded anything to their etsy shop in the uk for absolute months i think there was a few dribs and drabs and nibs things like that appeared in their shop but basically they, they've stopped manufacturing and certainly i don't know whether that's ever going to come back um i'd love to see more pens from Jin Hao and more designs from them. Kaigaloo have been producing very similar pens 
to the uh, centennial I think I might even have some let's let's show you some pens I'm reaching here what have we got right okay another gin hail fountain pen different model altogether I will be doing a full review of that in due course the gin hail um, Parker 51 alike and I've got a couple of these and quite honestly I was thinking of buying the new Parker 51 the modern Parker 51 even at the rather high price it is and I bought two of these instead and quite honestly I think from looking at other people's reviews of these gin hail pens I don't actually see any need to buy a Parker these do the job better and at a fraction of the price so that is still my main focus on fountain pen journey cheap nice looking fountain pens that write well work well and basically keep me happy keep me out of trouble um and there's some more expensive stuff in here i've got conklin yes I've got to admit, I said way back at the start of my fountain pen journey, and that was in March, I think, 2017, when I actually canned fountain pen journey. I decided it was not worth pursuing because of the uh, rather crappy comments that you get from people occasionally. And I just thought, you know what? what you're only suffering you, by writing crappy comments on people's um, people's efforts, people's works, quite honestly, they'll just stop doing it and then you won't have anything to watch on YouTube except cat videos and if that's all you ever want to watch then fine but if you want to talk about fountain pens or see fountain pens then Jesus, you know, just, you know, don't be a knob. <laughs> um, and as it happens I decided to carry on with fountain pen journey after a few months and here we go four years later still doing it and then to be honest i'm enjoying it and you get crappy comments so i just kind of block that person and they can comment and do whatever they want all over my videos and it doesn't matter because it actually boosts the uh interactivity so cheers for that <laughs> um so it helps me when you put your comments down there rightly or wrongly whether they're positive like most of them are so thanks very much for those you guys um or negative and crappy uh in which case you just get blocked and uh, you can still comment on my videos but you're the only person that ever sees those and it helps my channel grow so yeah love it um stack of stuff to go through in here and yeah i mean what, what's the, in this box oh Schaefer. Now, more, more uh, shall we say, second hand pens. There we go. Nice gunmetal Schaefer there. Uh, modern, obviously. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got so much to talk about because I haven't completely stopped buying fountain pens during the, uh, during the house move. Um, and what have I learned? I mean, quite honestly, I think those of you who followed my channel and you will have commented, I have seen the odd comment before and the people have said, yeah, you can see where your fountain pen journey is going because there's only so many dirt cheap pens around. Um, and yeah, sooner or later you go, you know what, rather than buy 10 cheap pens, I'll just buy one of these because I actually really quite like the look of it. And yeah, there wasn't anything that piqued my interest, cheap pen wise. Um, this is, it, it's, it's one of those things, fountain pen journey, not everybody just stays with one type of fountain pen. I know a lot of beginners may start off with cheap gin hail fountain pens, but I see it all the time on, um, on Facebook, on forums and things. People go, I have a Lamy Safari, which I love, I want my next level pen, can anyone tell me why um, the Mont Blanc 149 is so popular? And it's like, wow, you're taking a massive step up there. <laughs> taking a huge step up. Quite honestly, if you go to Mont Blanc 149, I don't know personally because I've never even written with one. But the chances are your journey with fountain pens is just going to end there because you're just not going to find anything else that you actually like. You've already hit your 
ceiling if you like um, if you choose to break through it then yeah I mean you can do what other fountain pen people do I mean it's like penultimate Dave I mean he, he collects some very 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 expensive very difficult to obtain unless you're actually in Italy very expensive fountain pens in every variety so I mean we're talking every one of the Visconti Homo Sapiens special editions limited editions things like that he loves those and yeah beautiful to look at but wow I could sell this house and just about buy some of his pens I mean it's, it's ridiculous uh, the price that some people um, will pay for fountain pens and this is the thing however you choose to use your fountain pens and however you choose to take your fountain pen journey yourself it doesn't matter it's a personal thing and this is what my fountain pen journey is all about it's a personal journey I like Schaefer I think they're a great brand even the modern Schaefer's you know I, I do like them I enjoy writing with them I enjoy the designs Laban something new something that I'm going to experiment with and enjoy trying hopefully so it might be another brand that I actually get into um, Jinhao I still love their pens I haven't gone oh I'm too good for Jinhao I'm happy to use any fountain pen that I enjoy writing with and I enjoy writing way back at the start some comments were about sort of you know your handwriting needs to improve no it doesn't I can read it and quite honestly I'm the only person that ever does read my handwriting everything's tight these days so I enjoy writing I don't enjoy improving my handwriting because I find it a waste of time it's it's unnecessary effort if you want to practice your handwriting and be a calligrapher let's use that term because I know it upsets the handwriting people um, if that's what you want to do fine enjoy it but quite honestly all this beautiful handwriting I see an awful lot of posts on Facebook and people have written a, I don't know like a quote of the day and it, the handwriting and they've got a nice pen they've chosen a nice ink combination and they've got beautiful beautiful handwriting and it's lovely and it's perfect it's unreadable <laughs> so many times oh you've got such beautiful handwriting I saw a post just today and somebody had actually written down and it, it sounded like it was quite a heartbreaking post somebody had experienced a terrible tragedy in their life and I actually couldn't read it I think it said something like David Compt or something it was like what the hell and, and I don't want to take away from somebody's personal tragedy but you know you might have beautiful handwriting but people can't bloody read it it's ridiculous so seriously enjoy how you use your fountain pens I know a lot of people follow my channel who enjoy sketching you know they don't even use the pens for actual writing as such it's all about the art it's about drawing and you know this is the diversity there's a huge diversity of pens we've got Laban go down in price to Schaefer go down in price further and you end up in the Jinhao territory and you know there is something for everyone over and above and below wherever it is your own fountain pen journey is yours it's a personal thing so enjoy it if it doesn't happen to be aligned with other people's I don't know views if you think that everyone should be using vintage pens rather than modern pens you're entitled to that opinion but just expect that's what you will get out of your own journey I mean yeah you 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 choose something you pursue it if it's something you love and you enjoy then do it go out there and enjoy it I will always enjoy buying cheap fountain pens because I like the nice colors the nice designs and I don't want to spend a fortune on a fountain pen things like the Laban you know you spend a bit more because it is something unusual it's something that you think I'll save up for and you know it's something different I haven't got a Jinhao that's like that I could say well the Jinhao Dragon series the snake series things like that could be construed as being similar but at the end of the day 
that's not what it's always about. Sometimes you just see something that you really like the look of. Um, so this is where my fountain pen journey is. I went from early days, I'm going to be a Jin Hao collector, to a few months down the line, I'm only going to really collect Pelican fountain pens. Move forward a year, I'm never collecting fountain, never collecting Pelican fountain pens because uh, no, just not as interested as I thought I would be. Then I got into Lamy and I thought, okay, I'll collect Lamy and I'll stick with German brands. And then you find yourself going down the route of going back to Chinese fountain pens with Moon Man, Pen BBS, Delight, and things like that because they released a few more interesting designs. And it just carried on from there. And it's been, quite honestly, a, it's been a proper journey. There's been twists, there's been turns. If you followed it from the start, you will see what I'm talking about. You will know what I'm talking about. Because I haven't just gone on all about the cheap pens, but it's mainly the cheap pens. That is my main love. Being able to spend less than 50 quid on a fountain pen, which looks good and writes well, is what I like. I don't want to spend 700 quid on a fountain pen because quite honestly that's my pen budget blown forever um, for, for a year <laughs> um, and it's it's not what I want to do I don't want to restrict myself so much and I find that the events of 2020 and 2021 have kind of hampered a lot of the pen buying because the pen manufacturers such as Moon Man and Delight and everyone else have all kind of been well unable to operate or they've run out of raw materials to make things and it's all kind of ground to a halt. Worst of all 2021 one of my uh, viewers commented on a video saying that uh, Caveco have in fact purchased various names trademark names such as Moon Man, Delight, and that's completely scuppered the Chinese fountain pen naming industry. Because your Chinese fountain pens were always very easy to find. There was the Moon Man brand, Jin Hao, Delight, all the other ones. And now those, some of those named brands, such as Moon Man and Delight, are now having to be either sold unbranded or else they're being sold as a, um, under a different name, Mo John, M O J O. H N being one of those brands that has popped up. To confuse matters even further, eBay, the source of most of my cheap Chinese fountain pens, since early, well, since January 20, uh, 20, uh, 2021 and the UK leaving the European Union, eBay has put taxes on everything from overseas. So it isn't actually economical for the Chinese to even bother listing and shipping pens from China on eBay. So now it's all on AliExpress and AliExpress is an e-commerce platform. Isn't even as user-friendly as eBay and eBay is, let's face it, a little bit of a mess. It has been for many years. I'm amazed that uh, eBay hasn't actually improved itself much over the last 10 years it's kind of remained the same uh, I mean you search for something if you spell it incorrectly you're there that's that <laughs> it is what it is it's it's a bit of a nightmare Aliexpress you can type in Jin Hao 100 and you'll get adverts for and listings for all sorts of stuff like I don't know swimsuits and stuff like that it's, it's just bizarre what actually gets forced through aliexpress's filters to uh, try to entice you to buy chinese um, stuff uh, so anyway buying from china has become more difficult thankfully i've not had any more issues with customs though admittedly I'm, i've got to say that i've bought very little from china in 2021 i mean there's this big bag of unknown things uh, and I'm assuming that some of those will be uh, Kai Glue fountain pens so that's that's where I am I mean I'm I thought four years on I would be very focused and I might even just be collecting vintage fountain pens something like that 
four years on i'm still actually still not really a fan of even bothering with vented fountain pens mainly because um i can't be bothered repairing things you know i like something to work out of the box and these things from china from germany from italy wherever they are if they're new chances are they do work out of the box if anything you might have to tweak the nib tune it slightly i don't mind doing that that's okay but when you've got something that needs a sack replacing and i know people say it's very easy it's very quick it's very simple and all the rest of it it isn't something that i actually want to do myself i cannot be bothered um and i don't like sack fillers you know i like cartridge converters i like piston fillers vacuum fillers yeah but as soon as you start straying into anything with any sort of sack it's a difficult it's a difficult pen to clean it's messy it doesn't hold a lot of ink it's, no it's just not for me so i don't think i'll ever be getting into the vintage uh, sack fillers of any description um but vintage pens piston fillers yeah i've got a few pelicans which i I haven't even shown you on my channel because I bought those way back at the start and I just kind of got snowed under with other pens. I mean, you can see what this is like. I mean, there's a whole box of empty um, pen boxes there, you know, stacks of pens. And sometimes I just don't have enough time to get around to using them all. Uh, the house move has obviously put uh, quite a kibosh on, uh, on my fountain pen channel. Uh, if I hadn't have pre-recorded videos then I wouldn't have been able to record very much until this moment and as you can see you know still got a whole office to uh, <laughs> to assemble so there we go four years of fountain pen journey 2021 this is where I'm at those are my thoughts and thank you all of you who followed me so far and uh, continue to do so i hope you uh, will continue to enjoy watching my fountain pen videos uh, i have got as you can obviously tell quite a lot of pen reviews to uh, do in due course a lot of a uh, lot of things which i'd uh, like to share with you and i hope you enjoy watching so thanks very much for watching this video and i shall see you next time bye